These are my thoughts on the Apple event last week. Just like I've said in other videos, I want to take a more relaxed approach to my videos and I do want it to be more like a conversation. So the way I'm going to go about this video is like me talking to a friend and also I want you guys to leave your comments in the comment section below with questions or any feedback that you have. Especially if you have an opinion about the new Apple products, definitely let me know what you think in the comment section below. As you might have known, Apple held their annual September event at the Steve Jobs Theatre in Cupertino where they launched a new Apple Watch and three new iPhones. The first product was the Apple Watch Series 4 and to be honest, I felt like this product stole the show. The reason for this is because I have the Apple Watch Series 1 and I've had it since pretty much day one and I've seen all the next generation Apple Watches as they came out and felt like they didn't really you know, justify the upgrade where I feel like the Apple Watch Series 4 brought so many upgrades that it actually will be worth getting the new one. So to break down some of the features of the new Apple Watch, it comes in a new display which is 30% bigger than last year's model. It also comes in two new sizes which is the 40mm and the 44mm compared to the 38mm and the 42mm last year. The digital crown now has haptic feedback so when you're scrolling through any items on the Apple Watch you're actually getting kind of a haptic feedback on your wrist to give it a more of a mechanical feel. Something that's really exciting about the Apple Watch Series 4 is the new fall detection. Now, with the advanced accelerometer in the Apple Watch Series 4, it can detect if you've fallen. Now, when you fall, your Apple Watch will notify you and say, look, we've noticed you've fallen. Do you want us to call emergency services? If you don't respond within a minute, it will automatically send your location to your emergency contacts, but it'll also contact the emergency services. So I think this is great in regards to kind of health and safety features, and I find that it's a massive plus for the new Apple Watch. Another health related feature that hits quite close to home because I actually have a heart murmur which means that my heart can either skip a beat or just have an irregular beat is the new heart rate sensor on the Apple Watch Series 4. What this means is there'll be new data that the Apple Watch will be able to process such as a low heart rate, a high heart rate or an irregular heart rate. So say for example, if you are just relaxing on the couch and you're not expected to have a super high heart rate, your Apple Watch can notify you if it notices that. And that could be an early sign of detection of maybe a heart attack or any other heart related diseases. I think the biggest health related announcement for the Apple Watch also had to do with the heart rate sensor, but they added an additional heart rate sensor right here on the digital crown, which allows you to do an ECG or an EKG reading. This is massive because it's the first FDA approved over the counter product that will be able to do an ECG or an EKG reading. What's great is all those features are going to come at no compromise to the battery so you're going to get still the full all day battery life. I charge mine every evening just the way I charge my phone or any of my other devices so I'm actually really happy to hear that too. All the previous Apple Watch bands will also work with the new Apple Watch Series 4. So even though there's the bigger screens, don't be worrying. You can still use your previous generation Apple Watch bands. So last year, Apple announced the use of cellular in the Apple Watch and how you'd identify is this red dot on the digital crown. I wasn't a massive fan of it, but this year Apple have decided to use a black band kind of on the outer ring for just the GPS model and then they've used kind of a red ring for the GPS and the cellular model. Now if you're living in Ireland like I am the cellular model isn't available yet so we'll have to wait for that but the Apple Watch Series 4 will start at 469 for the GPS model. This year Apple is just naming it Apple Watch with aluminium finish or stainless steel finish. That's it for Apple Watch, now let's move on to the iPhone. Like I said, I think Apple Watch stole the show, but there was some interesting iPhone announcements too. Starting off with the iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max, which quick side note, I seen an MKBHD video where he noticed that on the XS Max, if you look at it, it's XS Max, which is extra small Max. So it's kind of a bit of a, a weird name, you know, obviously they didn't want to go with the Plus because they've used the Plus name, but XS Max, bit weird. 
So the iPhone XS is a 5.8 inch OLED and the iPhone XS Max is a 6.5 inch OLED compared to the 5.5 inch in the 8 Plus. So if you're looking at the iPhone XS or the XS Max, know that you're getting more screen than the plus size model phones from last year. It comes in silver, space gray and gold. No rose gold this year and to be honest with you, the space gray is more like space black, kind of like they've used with the Apple Watch stainless steel version. But that's just my opinion. If you guys have an opinion, leave them in the comment section below. The storage options this year for the iPhone XS is 128 gigs, 256 and a whopping 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, why you would need half a terabyte of SSD storage on your phone, I just don't know. But if you are gonna buy this model, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. To put it in perspective, it is cheaper to buy a baseline model MacBook Pro than the highest range iPhone XS. Now, I know the gigabytes on the MacBook Pro might be different, but that's a laptop. So it is pretty incredible how much you can spend on your phone these days. But as I said, if you are going to be buying this one, let me know. The new iPhone XS obviously comes with a better camera this year, just like Apple do each year. But it actually is really impressive to see how Apple can use like an Apple made chip and the Apple made software to work together to get super great quality photos. So basically to put it in perspective, when you take a photo now with the iPhone XS, it takes a bunch of photos on top of that that are overexposed, underexposed, using kind of the sensors to be able to pick up faces and it basically just merges it all together to give you a super quality photo at the end result. Another big feature for the iPhone XS is the dual SIM ability. Now, a lot of other phone manufacturers have been adding this to their phones and they've been around for a while, but Apple are doing it a bit differently by allowing you to put an eSIM on your phone and then having a physical SIM tray to put your physical SIM in as well. So how you go about registering your eSIM is you would contact your carrier and then they would actually give you step by steps on how to register. So it'd be as if there's a SIM in your phone, but you don't actually physically need to put it in. They've used it in products like the Apple Watch or iPads before. This is great for people that are traveling so they can put one SIM in for home and then they can have another SIM for when they're traveling. Also people that maybe have a work phone and have a personal phone, they can just merge it together and not have the hassle of bringing two phones. That wraps up the iPhone XS. Now let's move on to Apple's surprise announcement, the iPhone XR. The iPhone XR has a 6.1 inch LCD display. Now that's compared to the higher resolution OLED display used on the iPhone XS. Something worth noting is the iPhone XR is actually a bigger display than the iPhone XS. So if you're looking for the biggest screen in the smallest handset, maybe the iPhone XR could be a good option. The colors for the iPhone XR include white, black, coral, yellow, blue, and product red. The storage options include 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, and 256 gigabytes. Now, to be honest with you, I use a 64 gig iPhone and I haven't really had any problems with it. I could probably push it out to 128 gigs, but I've seen other YouTubers that use 256 gigs and they don't even use a fraction of it. So obviously it depends on what you think you're gonna be using. Photos and videos will take up a massive amount of storage. Obviously apps and stuff as you cache stuff in them will take up more storage. So it depends on your usage. I think I'll be kind of sticking around the 64 to 128 gigabyte range. Some of the things on iPhone XR that you won't find is 3D Touch. Now, if you're unfamiliar with 3D Touch, basically what it means is when you press on something on your screen with force, it'll pop up with various different options. Now, Apple have replaced it with a thing called Haptic Touch. So when you press and hold on something, it will give you haptic feedback instead of the 3D Touch. Another thing that you won't find on the iPhone XR is the dual camera system that is on the iPhone XS. So instead you just get the single lens. But what's really impressive about this is that Apple have used the software, like I said previously, with the hardware to be able to combine and actually give you the features of a dual camera system, like giving those portrait mode photographs with the bokeh effect. The iPhone XR starts off at 879 euro, which makes it really appealing for somebody that needs a new iPhone, 
but might not necessarily want all the bells and whistles. So those are my thoughts of the Apple products announced last week. If you think I left anything out, if you want to let me know your favorite product, your favorite feature, or if you want to give me any feedback, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave my handle up on the screen here. I post updates of what I'm doing and any tech-related news. As always, thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.